Hi, my name is Dustin Matthews, co-founder of Speaking Empire and the author of the No BS Guide to Powerful Presentations. I'm on today, Doves Barron's Leadership Show, and we're gonna be talking about how to influence, how to get people into action in powerful presentations. We'll see you on the show. Congratulations. You are tuned into Dove Barron's Leadership and Loyalty Show, the number one podcast for Fortune 500 executives and those who are dedicated to creating a quantum leap in leadership. Your host, Dove Barron, is the founder of FullMontyLeadership.com. He's an executive mentor to leaders like you, a contributing writer for Entrepreneur Magazine, CEO World, and he's been featured on CNN, Fox, CBS, and many other notable sites. Dov Barron is an international business speaker who was named by Inc. Magazine as one of the top 100 leadership speakers to hire. Now, over to Dov Barron. Welcome, dear friends, fans, and fellow aficionados of leadership excellence. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Dov Barron's Leadership and Loyalty Tips for Executives, part of the full Monty interview series, where today we're going to take a look at how many of my friends top sales trainers, people like the famous Lee Bartlett and Lahat Sabi, are telling me that they're being hired by top CEOs to train them in sales because selling is becoming a growing requirement in the leadership positions. Hmm. So stay tuned. If you are a new listener, new viewer, strap yourself in. We're about to go full Monty. If you are a regular on the show, and a big thank you to you for making us the number one show, the number one podcast for Fortune 500 listeners. And we really appreciate that. So thank you for sharing the show with everybody you know. And listen, we always need your help in staying relevant. So get yourself over to iTunes. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the show. Go do it now. <laughs> All right, let's strip it down and dive right in. As a leader, whether you're a CEO, someone in the C-suite, sales leader, entrepreneur, or leader in any capacity, you know, as entrepreneurs, as leaders, it is part of our job to sell. We sell our vision, we sell our purpose, we sell our ideas, our strategies, and more and more commonly, we are being asked to sell our wares, even though we may have a sales team. Furthermore, we are often expected to do the selling through the new medias, through webinars and online uh, th events and speeches and seminars. So how do you, how can someone who is maybe feels like the sales process feels totally foreign to them, how can they learn to not only sell, but become spectacular at it? And what's more, is there a formula to do that and an actual architecture that you can follow? Well, stay tuned because our guest today is Dustin Matthews. Dustin Matthews transforms businesses and brands. Right out of school, Dustin helped take a company from, 11, from 1 million to 14 million and number 35 on Inc. Magazine's fastest growing private companies. His newest venture, kind of, Speaking Empire is recognized as a disruptive company in the leadership training and education space. Dustin's company was privileged to be involved with the Get Motivated Success Tour, which included past presidents, World leaders such as Bill Clinton, Laura Bush, and sports stars such as Michael Phelps, uh, Joe Montana, and business personalities like Steve Forbes and the Wozniak. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dustin Matthews! All right, I'm, I'm excited. Hey, thanks for having me on. I'm really pumped and fired up for this uh, interview today. Good, man. It's great to have you here. We're really happy to have you on, and thank you for com coming live from, from PodFest in Florida. I think you are, right? Right yeah, now. that's right. Uh, I think it's funny because we're doing a podcast and I'm here at the place where they teach how to do podcasts. So that I'm really excited. That is pretty cool stuff. That's great stuff. <laughs> so your company, the, the Speaking Empire, um, for leaders um, watching and listening, first of all, what is it and why should they think it's relevant to them? Because, you know, they might think, well, I'm in charge of the bottom line. What This is not particularly relevant to me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Dove, like you said uh, there, that whether you're a speaker, a C-level a, a communicator, a C-level suite, you've got to be able to understand how to motivate people to take action. And you as the leader of the company or you as the leader of the management team have to understand how to give a message that not only leads – internal, but how do you lead externally? And so that's what Speaking Empire, I founded Speaking Empire, was all about, was how do you put together that message that gets people into action? Yeah. Now, I read that, um, you know, like I spoke about in the intro there, that your company uh, became on the Inc. 500, 
And yeah. you say in your in your bio that it was founded on yeah. one great presentation. There you go. Tell us what you mean by that, because that's that's kind of wow. All right. Sure, absolutely. I mean, the the easiest thing that I can uh, liken it to that everyone can understand is a politician has a stump speech. And so, you know, that speech is given over and over and maybe it's condensed or maybe it's lengthened, but essentially the core message is given again and again. And so I didn't come from politics, but I did come from the world of direct selling where essentially we just put an audience in front of the same presentation. So we had one speaker, uh, which eventually blossomed out to over 20 speakers, give the same presentation over and over and over again because our whole intention was to get the same result, to be consistent, to get people to take the action that we were looking for them to take. Mm, I see. Okay, folks, if you are thinking, wow, things uh, transformed quickly there and you've got a different, completely different background, it's true. Uh, we did get interrupted. We apologize for that. There was a uh, lot of noise in the background and our guest, Dustin, decided that was better to move and that's what we've decided to so it's good we want to make sure that you've got a high quality show and so we're going to keep moving and thanks for staying with us and thank you Dustin so um, in your bio it states that you are the mentor and coach to some of the world's leading speakers coaches and business owners thought leaders uh, people like Kevin Harrington from the Shark Tank um, people I know personally like Robert Allen and Forbes Riley um, what do these folks come to you for specifically you know, I think the big thing is that these folks are experts. You know, we're all experts, I believe. You know, if you're watching this show, if you're running a business, if you're tuning in, you're an expert in the thing that you do. And so even if you pivot a degree and you try a new channel or you try a new industry, there are nuances. And so experts realize that when you move into something new, yes, you have a lot of stuff that you can bring with you. And so the reasons why we work with these folks is to take their skill set and channel it uh, specifically for webinars or specifically from a stage presentation or on a video. And so I think of Kevin Harrington, you know, his, this guy knows how to sell when it comes to video. He knows how to put products there. But when he has to do it himself and be the pitch man and he's got to do it in a room, he's a little bit like a fish out of water. And he'll tell you that at least when he first got started. Sure. And so we gave him access and really reminded him of a lot of things that he was doing for infomercials apply here, but here's the nuance, here's the difference, or here's how you, you know, can make this work in this environment. And so that's why folks like that come to us is to really understand the nuances. Yeah. I mean, when I think about Robert Allen, um, who I've known for many, many years, even, yep. even 20 years ago, Robert was teaching other people how to sell from the stage and he yeah. was a master at it. So why would somebody like Robert Allen, I mean, cause I want to have people realize why people come to you. Sure. Why would someone like Robert Allen, who was a master at selling from the stage, come and say, hey, Dustin, show me what to do? Well, Dub, I want to shoot you straight here, and, and, and everyone here, I want to shoot everyone straight here, is that we made him an offer he couldn't refuse. And uh, for those of you that don't know, is uh, you know Robert loves royalty deals. And so really? he I loves- Really? I know that about Robert. Yeah, he loves to put <laughs> his name. Kidding, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those that, that didn't uh, don't understand the laugh and why we're laughing is he loves to put his name. He's a, a shrewd businessman. He loves to put his name on something uh, that is reputable. And then he has a marketing firm or a company behind him. And so he, he'll tell you, you know, he's not the manager of people. He doesn't want to be in the office every day. He wants to do his gift and stay in his zone. And so we made an offer to him and said, listen, let's collaborate, let's joint venture on a mastermind concept. And so what we did there was we shared with him what we were doing in the speaking world, but we took it a step further. And we always look for this, look for strategic partnerships and joint ventures. Sure. And so with Robert, he was a celebrity, he was the whale, we paid him for that. And we built an entire mastermind business group around his brand and his likeness. Yeah, fabulous. Now, one of the things you talk a lot about is choreography. So, yes. so explain that to us in, in the context, because as a leader, like, you know, choreography might seem appropriate for dance. Um, so tell us what it means in the context of what it is that you're doing. Absolutely. Well, you're, you're spot on right that. You know, if you think of the Blue Man Group or your favorite opera or your play, I mean, these folks for $100 or $200 or, or where, whatever it costs, you know, from wherever you are in the world, these folks choreograph, they practice and practice, not just the people in front and on the stage, but the lighting technician, you know, the sound engineer, it's all choreographed. And the reason why they do that is to get a consistent result, which is to make the audience happy, to make us happy as the people sitting there. And so when it comes to selling, 
people don't think about it this way. They say, well, Dustin, can you just help me with my pitch? And the answer is yes. You know, we can help with presentation, we can help with messaging, but in life, it's more than just the performance itself. There's the build up to the performance, and then there's in the marketing and business world, there's the follow through or the follow up. And so choreography means to me is, are you mapping or are your marketing and sales team mapping the whole path that you want a prospect or a customer to go down? Not just saying, hey, marketing, create a campaign, and hey, hey, sales, let's get a conversion, but getting them to work together to create this sequence. Because if you, if you don't give them a sequence, if you don't give them a path to follow, they're gonna go every which way, and you may get results, but it's gonna be erratic, and it's not gonna be as consistent as you'd like. Right, now in the book you lay out a, a five-step formula uh, when mm -hmm. it comes to speaking, uh, and I know this is a, is going to be an overview because I also want to get into sure. architecture base too, but sort of give us a, a that, that sort of 10,000 foot view of this five step formula and why each of those steps are important. Yeah, absolutely. So here, here, here they are real quick and I'll give a case study example that will that'll relate to everyone. Sure. So in any presentation you do this whether you know it or not so knowledge is power so so number one is you have an introduction and, and i'll explain this in just a second number two is you're telling some sort of story three is you're making an offer even if you're not selling something you're always selling something maybe it's not a product but you're getting your team motivated uh, and, and such four is the body that's the meat of the presentation and then five would be the close so we got time to, to give a, a tip yeah, in let, each let's one. Do, let's do a quick okay. overview of what each one is, a why of each one. Absolutely. So in your introduction, there's no shortage of ways to start a speech, but here's what I want you to consider. If you look at society and you look at the president of the United States, the queen of England, you look at athletes, you look at celebrities, whenever these people show up at places, they never just start. Think of your favorite rock band, U2, right? You never just see them come out on stage. There's always a warm up act or two. Yes. You know, the, the president never just comes out. He has to be introduced you know, royalty, you never see the top person in royalty. There, there are always introductions of the, the royal family and then the big, yeah, big I can just see the I can just see the Queen of England coming out and going, hey, my peeps, hey, I'm what, here for you. <laughs> what's up? What's going on? What's up? What's going on? Let's get down. It's just <laughs> Q2. You. It's QE2 here. <laughs> I'm down with you, baby. <laughs> Uh, bring the levity. I love it. I love it. I get so serious and passionate sometimes. So good. Break, break me up, baby. Uh, <laughs> See the Queen of England come out and do that. And start rapping. Absolutely. This is rapping, so, baby. <laughs> so here's the deal. You got to be properly introduced. So if you want to leverage the, and I'm not even talking about presenting. If you want to leverage the laws of influence, just look around. The people in society that are most influential, that you could say make the most money, you know, are properly introduced. So before your next talk before you give an important address, what is something that can introduce you? Is there somebody that they know? Is there a celebrity? This is why people, uh, companies use pitchmen, right? Because there is this warm up. And so I want you to consider having a video or having a person introduce you before you even get up and do your address. So let's just pause for a sec there because I've been a speaker sure. for 34 years. Um, yep. Invariably, I've had a, a, an intro that we've written that we've given to the person introing us and invariably that doesn't go so well. Yep. <laughs> the person introing you is looking at it for the first time as they go up. They're not prepared. They're not, um, practiced at it. Um, and they fumble over your introduction. So, you know, the alternative as many of us do now as speakers is we have a video where somebody is actually saying the thing that is in the intro too. Um, yep. which do you think is better? I like I them mean, both. So okay. uh, here's why. So here's the, the best case scenario is you actually have a good MC or a good person introduced. And I realize that doesn't happen, but if you do have that, you want to have that person because people are going to have affinity. They're going to know that person. Likely they're there sometimes at a speaking event because that person's face is all over the marketing, uh, sometimes. And so I like to have the affinity play there. And I like to have them introduce the video because even if they are bad, well, at least I got, you know, a little bit of them introducing me. And if they really fumble it up, I've got the video as insurance. So in an ideal world, introducer that introduces the video that then brings you out on stage would be the most ideal. Now, if they're really crappy, then just skirt, <laughs> really skirt them and then just use your video. 
Um, but ideally, you would want to leverage both of those things. But oftentimes, as a speaker, we don't really know yeah. until we're going to the stage and the yep. person is fumbling that. So is that intro video always there as, I mean, as to sort of to back up even if they're terrible or even if they're good? Absolutely. It's, 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 yeah, why not have both? So it, for me, it's an insurance play and you know, it's a plus play. Like if they're great and then, you know, people see a video, video does stuff that, you know, people can't, you know, high motion, graphic sound, it, it gets your heartbeat going. And so it, it's good for those reasons, but more often than not, Doug, because you know, you and I have been speaking for, for some time here. Um, we've had our share of bad introductions and it's no way to start a presentation, especially if you're trying to win over the audience or sell something. And so I always have the video in there to bring me up. So what's in that video? Cause it's obviously not a repeat of what the guy was just, or the lady was just saying who introduced you. Correct. So in that video is it's motivational music and I don't mean cheesy, but you know, rock music that gets the crowd excited, you know, before you even give whatever message it is that you're to deliver, you've got to sell them on it, right? right. You've got to get people excited. And, and, and Doug, there's a stat out there that says, you know, people actually are more excited about their vacation, dreaming about it, anticipating it than actually being there on the Caribbean island. I, I, it seems far fetched to me, but this is a, a, a statistic that's out there that it's just that anticipation factor yeah. of just it happening. And so you want to make sure that in that video you've got, you know, high intensity music. If that's your if that is your audience, if you're trying to get yeah. them now, if you're in a boardroom, this may be a little overkill and weird. <laughs> um, but if you are speaking in a you know sort of business crowd in front of thousands and you you want to get them excited, you have that you want to have your credibility in that intro video, famous pictures of people that you've worked with or, or shots. And then obviously you on stage and you in the media showing Very you're cool. the expert. Very cool. All right, good. So we've got the intro down. Yep. Now we go to the so story. Yeah. So story, you know, depending on your genre, your niche, you know, what the purpose of your speaking is, you know, you're going to tell different stories. And so the big thing I want to underscore here is that people love transformation. Hollywood makes trillions, billions, whatever number on this story of transformation. And so in your presentation, you want to tell some story of transformation. Now, it doesn't have to be you broke living under the bridge down by the river, you know, as Chris Farley, you know, told us in the SNL skit, but it does have to show. So maybe it's your department, maybe it's the marketplace that was in free fall and you developed some software or you found a trend and you're now radically transforming that. People want to see transformation. And so it's your job to find that story, tell it. And then if you're selling something, a product or service, link it. Mm -hmm. And what I mean what I mean by that is to plant seeds and to let people know, listen, the market was in free fall. I was stressed out. Uh, that's when I got, you know, a team of traders together or software analysts together. We started, you know, working on it and we created this thing. And so from that free fall, we were, we were, uh, ready to, uh, you know, make a transformation, ready to make a play into the marketplace. And so again, people want to see that story of transformation. It's your job to figure that story out and communicate it to them. Okay, so th and is that why the offer comes next? Exactly. Because most so people would think about the offer as being at the end, and you yes. got the offer pretty early on. Absolutely, you know, especially if you're in an environment where you are selling something, or you're asking somebody to donate, or there's money changing hands, or, or a big decision to be made. What you have to do is you have to let people know, get the elephant out of the room. Like it's there. They know that you're going to sell something. They know that you're going to ask for a donation or they're going to, they know that you're going to ask that team to do a certain task. And so you let, when you let them know earlier on in your presentation, you remove the resistance because people are in the audience and they're like this, you know, sure. they've got this cross arm. I know we've all experienced that in meetings or in, in rooms. And so there's this resistance. And so as soon as you start to describe the resistance, then it loosens up. You're not going to win over all the skeptics. I'm not no. saying that. But at least you're bringing it to the forefront and not waiting to the end where they're invalidating you the whole time. And so in your presentation, it's your job, again, to provide value. And the offer is what is your solution? Is it your product? Is your coaching? Is it your, uh, you know, development software that you've, you know, created, whatever it is, you're there to offer that as the solution mm. and plant that early. Okay. So we've got the intro, you've got your story that leads to transformation. Yep. You then you then uh, address the elephant in the room. You've brought out yep. the offer without saying come buy from me right now, but you've made it clear that you do have something to sell. 
Absolutely. And there's one thing I want to squeeze in there because it's vitally important. So before you provide the solution, the off before you make your offer, you want to educate the market or your audience. And the way to do that is with statistics. And so you can't assume they're all sitting in the lab or they're all in the you know same building as you working on the problem and know about it. They don't. And so you have to at least bring them up to speed. They'll never know what you know, but you have to bring them up to speed with statistics media references, uh, something credible that they can relate to. So if, if all your people watch CNN, if all your people read the Wall Street Journal and New York Times or what have you, then you want to cite from that because it shows that you know something. It shows that you're you know going after credible resources uh, that they're familiar with. And so you want to educate your marketplace and say, listen, you know, according to CNN, you know, the market fell 17 percent or, you know, sales are down, you know, in this sector by, you know, whatever, 13 percent. And so that's why we went to work and developed this life changing thing or this industry revolution. So make sure to educate and provide value, then offer the solution they okay. offer. So then, so then what is the body? The body, this is my favorite part. So the body is the science and this is most people's favorite part. The body is the science. So if you're an infomercial guy, like, like Harrington, as we mentioned earlier, there's always some, I call it pseudoscience, but you know, I'm sure there it's real science. There's always some science, some space age polymer that has been, you know, injected into this spray on silicone stuff. Uh, if you're a weight loss coach, there's always, you know, the five step formula for results. And so whatever it is that you have created, whatever process that you help people become successful or you help companies, you know, revolutionize their sales cycle, you now get the opportunity and the right to explain it because you've gotten people excited. They've built rapport with you in the earlier part of the presentation. And then now, now is your job to educate. Your job isn't to teach them to death but just to get them up to speed and to let them know that, hey, we didn't just throw this together, there's real science or there is a five-step process that we've developed that now can help you make a difference in your world. So there's a, so this, so the buddy is, this is our process. This is our process. And, and, and Dove, you know, a lot of people have been in places where they felt sold, especially, you know, when I say that, a lot of people say use the used car salesman, right? Like right. no one wants to be that guy or gal. And so what you want to do is when you are educating people through that process, there's initially there's going to be resistance. So I have kids right now, uh, you know, they're very young, two young boys. And when I tell them to do something, I'm definitely getting that resistance right really? now. That's unusual. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kids I know, are so I know naturally you can compliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, so – that's the same thing that happens in our audience. You know, you tell them, you know, hey, go do this. And they're like, oh, we tried that. We paid a consultant, you know, you know, 50 grand to go do that. And we got nowhere. And so you're likely to hit up against those roadblocks. So you're wise if you will find a case study in between each point that validates it. And a case study, it could be a testimonial, although I'm not a yeah, I'm not a fan of even that word. I like to educate the audience on, you know, successes from clients, you know, develop a case study, tell the story, not just like, here's a person that made, you know, 17% gain, or here's a company that generated an extra quarter million. Like, is that believable? Right. You know, case study goes deeper in. And so when you do that, after each point, you tell a case study, and then you tell a point, you tell a case study, you naturally win over the audience because people love to hear stories of success. They want to see what's possible. Right. And then how are you, clo you know, because the fifth step is the, is the close. So how yeah. are you closing it off the, 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 I think that a lot of times leaders when they speak feel like, I don't know where to end it. Uh, do I end it on a low? Do I, and people actually, many people do end on a low and that's often counterintuitive, but sometimes works well. Do I end on a low? Do I end on a high? Do I say, go to the back of the room? Like, Bob used to do, uh, <laughs> throw your credit card at my people. You know, what is it? Yeah, so this is a good, a good question. Again, environment matters. So again, in the boardroom, you know, you're, you're probably not going to tell people to run to the back of the room. And so what, here's what's important to, to understand about the close is every presentation should call people into action. And so now at the end, you've built rapport, you've demonstrated success, you've gotten people excited about possibilities. Now it's time to call them into action. Action. And an action can be a donation if you're in the nonprofit world. An action could be run to the back of the room. And so you want to be very clear from the beginning. And here's the secret sauce. You want to start with the end in mind. So even before you sit down to write your presentation, what do you want your audience to do? 
Do you want the board to sign off on this decision? Well, let's get real clear about that before we develop everything else that we're going to we're going to share. And then that becomes the filter on if it's important. So, you know, if you're trying to get the board to do something, you know, you telling your story of when you were five years old and you, you know, you fell off the mountain doesn't make sense. And so that that'll be your filter, your North Star to figure out what do I want to put in this presentation. And so to reiterate what you want to do is you want to call people into action. You want to be very direct and tell them exactly what to do. Even if it's something like, you know, take out your phones right now and subscribe, go to our Facebook page, take out your credit card and walk to the back and and buy a product or service. You just want to be very direct and you want to tell them what to do. In my opinion, unless you're a motivational speaker, the standing ovation is really the kiss of death. And so standing Whoa, ovations let me are great. Just stop you right there, because that right now you you've you, you've you've crossed over the line, and I think that's great. I want to know about yes. that. Yes. Because yes. every speaker in the world wants a standing ovation, and then you just mm-hmm. said something like, "It's the kiss of death." Tell us yeah. what you mean. You know, th- this goes to, to psych. Uh, this, is a, this is a good question, good clarifier. You know, I never came from from the world of of uh, motivational speaking. I think it's it's awesome. It's great. Uh, I look up to those guys. You know, I like that they motivate us. I've always came from the street. And what I mean by that is I always had this sell. And uh, if you know this term, uh, sing for supper, it comes from way back in our industry, before my time even. I'm, I'm a big fan of, of, of studying history. And so sing for supper essentially was, listen, I'm going to sing. And if I don't get tips and if I don't get people to pay me, I'm not eating dinner that night. Right. And so for me, I'm a marketer. I'm a business guy. When I do something, I want to get a result And so it comes from my programming of direct response marketing. I want to get people into action. Mm -hmm. And so when I say the standing ovation is the the kiss of death, I say that to polarize people listening, but also to prove a point. Listen, if you want a standing ovation and you want to feel good at the end of it, that's great. Me, I'm more interested in sales. I'm more interested in opt-ins. I'm more interested in donations. And so that's the world that I come from. And I get not everyone comes from my world, but I'm a business guy. I know you have a business audience or you have leadership. And you want to, you know, propel change. You want to have people do things. And so in my close, there is a call to action, a single call to action. So, so bottom line is the close is telling them what to go do now. Exactly. Right. So that here's what you need to do now. What you need to do now is take out your phone and email me and tell me when you want me to come and do this with you or when you want to come do that with us or when or you need to you know, go to the back of the room and talk to Charlie or whatever it is. But there's a very specific do this now. Absolutely. You know, Doug, there's, there's a reason why this is the number one show and it's because uh, you know, I'll, say, I'll say something and then you, you deep dive on it. And the answer is absolutely, that's exactly, exactly right. So you want to have that call to action because let me ask you this, and this is really a question for everyone listening in. You know, have you ever been in your lifetime at an event? Maybe it's a sports event. Maybe it's a motivational speaker, and they, you know, get you real inspired, and then life hits you in the face. Meaning, you get a call from the kids, or or your wife, or your spouse, and and you just get taken out of that moment. And so, I believe when we have when we communicate with folks in this world, they're most excited right after we talk, unless you're really bad. And so, this continuum goes down really quickly. So within an hour, they've already forgotten about you. Sure, they remember hour, you. They've had lunch within an hour. They talked to, as you They're said, talked to their kids. In or... a, yeah, in a day, in a week, in a month. I mean, wow. So unless you get them to do something, and if you want to create change in this world, we have to get people into action. No matter what environment we're in, we have to get people to take that action. Because people are resistant. Life happens. You know, they, you know, people don't want to change sometimes. And so we've got to get them to do something. And, and that's, that's my belief. Yeah, I mean, this is, I think that many of the leaders are going to get this very clearly. Um, I think that somebody who, you know, has been a speaker like me for many, many years, um, that is part of the challenge is that we, we, I, I, we teach training, we, we teach speaking, we teach people, in my business, we teach people how to speak. And, yeah. and one of the things I say is, um, I want you to know, if you're up there for the applause, you're in the wrong business. Good. Um, because, and, and I say that knowing I've been up there for the applause, right? So, because at the end of the day, as you said, if nobody buys anything, you know, you're going to be speaking for free for the rest of your life. And that kind of sucks. So, Absolutely. That's a that's a hard hard line, 
um, to step forward into. Well, here's, this, it's a good point. Here's what I would say. Go get the go get the round of applause because I did it too. And I think a lot of people in this world, they, they do it. You know, like if you want to speak, oftentimes you do enjoy the spotlight. You are your certain personality. So go get those hand claps. Go get those round of applause. And then, you know, you wait a day or two days or three days. and You're like, wow, that was great. And then you look at your bank account or you look at, you know, the statistics if you're tracking the stats and the data. Uh, and then you'll see. Oh man, um, that that kind of you know like that didn't you know really contribute anything. I get there's a brand play, but you know unless you're a professional speaker and you're out to make a like you got to be out there a lot to develop a brand and that's going to cost some money. And so I realize not everyone is is in that game in that world. No, and and you know one of the things that we tell leaders is, you know, you need to learn to speak because it's an increasingly des desired requirement of being a speaker uh, of being a leader is to be able to speak. Because as you just said, it's a brand establisher. You establish yourself as the brand and you show your expertise and et cetera, et cetera because all leaders need a personal brand as well as a corporate brand. That is important, but there is this other piece. Uh, and as I said, you know, many of my friends who are, who are in the uh, speak, uh, sales training world are being asked by CEOs, teach me how to sell. So this, you know, what you're talking about here is bringing those two things together. But in to put it back into the into this world for a minute, are you saying that this leader coming in? Because I, you know, I've I've talked about this with many speakers. That the leader coming in who wants to speak has to be super well rehearsed every know every word, because I think that there are I know I know there are speakers who rehearse every every. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. you know, every wink, every laugh, every word. And there are other speakers who are much more improvisational. What's your sense on this? Is yeah. it to know the steps and then let that flow? Or is it to know every word? It's, it's really, you know, in my opinion, this is straight opinion. I don't have data or science, but this is based on you know, me just talking with lots of individuals, coaching them, working with them. And so, if you want to get consistent results, you should memorize it word for word because then you can test it. So the example that this comes from is there is this world of preview seminars, which is, you know, if you've ever been invited to a lunch and learn or if you ever got an invitation for, you know, a free steak dinner with a financial planner, there is this world that exists out there and in, in society and around the world where there's a ho there's an event going on in a hotel, you know, in 50 cities across the country. And so if you want to get consistent results where you're giving a 90 minute talk in the morning and you're giving one at nighttime, which is the model that they subscribe to and they do it five, six days a week and they just do this in order to get consistent results, you've got to have the same thing. And then if you want to test, you change a few words, you change what you're wearing to figure that out. Now, if you're the CEO of a company who's going to give, you know, a keynote address one time, two times, three times, uh, you know, unless like it's a stockholder meeting or there's something really, you know, riding on it, you may want to understand where you're going, have that freedom and flexibility if that's your personality style and then be done with it. Right. Because it does take a great deal of effort to memorize it word for word, the aha when you drink the water. And there's a place for that. But it's a matter of, of ROI. And then the last thing I'll, I'll say here, Dov, is it's a matter of personality. Some people dread. They dread being scripted word for word. And so I think about this, you know, actors are given a script. Now they do go off script. They do add flavor to it. They add nuances there. And so, but the best ones are following a script often written by, or every time written by somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so you can bring the life to it and you can bring your personality. And yet Dov, some people still don't sit well with that. And I say, okay, good. Understand the structure, understand the psychology and understand where you're headed but man, you better be practicing, be practicing because oftentimes you're working against the clock. And so if you go out there unstructured and not timed and rehearsed and you go over, you know, there may be repercussions for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I, um, we're going to be tight on time, but I want to, you know, you, you know, you've developed this formulaic process that as you said you know the best in the world are coming to you for yes um and there's the you also have an architecture for an irresistible offer and i know that's nine steps and i don't know how much time we'll <laughs> have to get into that but it, sure. um can you give us some highlights in there because 
Um, one of the things that's so vital for leaders is, is, I hate to use the word because it has a negative connotation, but persuasion. And, mm-hmm. to, and, to, and to use the healthy word of that, which is, is influence. That if yeah. you are a leader, you are an influencer. And that there's mm-hmm. a need for us to influence. Um, and you have that there is a, a nice architecture to that. Can you sort of give yeah. us some highlights in there? Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's address the persuasion and influence because it is, it is, this is a great question. It's controversial. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the example that just comes to mind right now in that moment is, you know, when you go to your fast food restaurant, I know you guys don't go to fast food food restaurants, but when you see, uh, you know, the, the McDonald's hamburger on TV or the Burger King thing, that thing looks amazing, right? Like it just like done it up that, you know, it's got makeup on the bun, you know, it looks awesome. You go into the restaurant, it does not look like that. And so the question is, is like, are they hoodwinking us? Are they persuading us? No, they're putting their best foot forward. And so when it comes to irresistible offer, you know, you could go out there and just make an offer or you could put some thought behind it. You could think about what are people's objections? What are their biggest objections and how does my problem solve it? And oftentimes you might find, well, my problem doesn't solve it. They actually need this piece of software before they can really maximize. Well, my thought would be that's not irresistible because you're making people do two things. Why not buy that company, buy that software or build that software and put it into one? And so a big lesson or a highlight is thinking of what are the big objection my marketplace or my prospect have and how can I overcome them? Real quick example to make it crystal clear. I know we're tight on time. Let's say we're selling coaching or we're selling an information product to make you a better leader. Okay, well, everyone struggles with time management and maybe you're not the time management guy or gal. I get it. However, it's a big objection. Like, listen, you know, I, I, I do this, but, you know, I'm, I'm really busy. Great. You could say you don't have an answer to that or you could try to sell them, listen, you know, when you do this and you get this course, it's going to make you better. It's going to make you more time efficient. You know, yeah, you can do that. However, what I would say and what Irresistible Offer Architecture will tell you is – overcome that objection by incorporating a product. So what I would do is I would interview a time management expert or I would go to somebody that that is an expert and say, hey, listen, can I have a piece of your course or would you be willing to give me, you know, something that I can give people that are buying my program and service? And so now when I'm making my offer, when I'm going in for my close and I get the objection of time and say, listen, listen, I get this is an amazing course. A lot of you are short on time. And so for that reason, we're even incorporated this book or this audio or this thing on time management to help you get the results you're looking for quicker. And so that's just a real quick example of like, how can you think of what the objection is and overcome it by just incorporating it into your product or service? Yeah, I think that uh, addressing the problem before it gets in there or before it it's, eats away inside of their head. But there's an interesting thing here uh, that, that I really want to bring up with you, Dustin, and that is yeah. that... Um, Having having been having do what I do, which is leading leaders for for thirty years, or thirty plus yeah. years, is that part of the human psyche is that um, I need things to change, but I don't want to. <laughs> Meaning, it's everybody else's problem. And so mm-hmm. when uh, when somebody is offering something that is needed by that individual, yeah, you know, whoever that individual is, i.e., an audience of three hundred leaders or whatever it might be. Um, they are often looking for the problem not to be them. And their their objection then is, I don't want to change, right? So making the irresistible offer there is is can be more challenging. I'm putting this forward because I, yeah. I know that our audience is going to go, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, this, this, this comes up to me, and you call me out if I don't answer this in the way that, that you had intended. So I think of Dennis. Uh, some of our clients in the dental niche would that show dentists how to you know build their practice and grow it even faster. Of course, the dentist, the main the main person is not broken, right? But his staff is broken. Mm-hmm. So if we get the dentist in the room and we're saying, listen, here's how you can grow your practice, we've got a special program or boot camp or workshop or whatever it is that your staff can come to that's gonna optimize them and make them feel better. Now, like I'm like, oh, you know, if I'm the dentist, of course I'm not broken. And oh, by the way, when your staff does it, we have some material for you. You can, you know, you know, it's best that you go through it so you can, you know, keep an eye on them to make sure they're doing what they need to do. And so essentially it's a Trojan horse because yes, you're going to give that exec or that dentist, you're going to give them material that's going to help them, you know, change self-limiting beliefs or that's going to, you know, empower them to become a better leader. But you're sort of leading with, well, let's fix the team. And then, oh, by the way, you get this benefit here. 
Mm-hmm. And so that's what I think of when you when you share that of, listen, I'm not broken. I'm not going to buy it. I don't need to change. Um, so find a way around it, but still get the end result. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it's fascinating to me that um, very often it, it's just so clear that you are the problem. You know, yeah. you being the leader are the problem. And yeah. of course, you're blaming your team and you're blaming all this. And I can... I, we, someone can help you, um, yep. but you don't want to deal with it. So, you know, and, and even if we trained, as you said, the staff, you're still going to be at the root of the problem. <laughs> so, you know, that, that is the, the major issue here is yep. getting people to, you know, cause you talked about transformation, getting them to transform in themselves, getting them Absolutely. because, because even using your analogy of a dentist, when do most people go to the dentist? Simple. When they're in pain. <laughs> right. Right? There right. are smart people, I'm married to one, um, who come from that industry who go to the dentist preventatively. Right? <laughs> uh, but, but, but by my birth, I was born in the UK. There's nothing in my conditioning that says you go to a dentist <laughs> until you're ready to pull it out with pliers. So, oh, that's great. So you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's an interesting dilemma is that often people don't change until they're in, in enormous pain. And then if you relieve the pain, they're happy and they won't do what it takes to, to go to that next level. How do you, how would you use this, this, uh, this architecture to get them to, to see, I need to be ahead of this? Absolutely. I mean, you're, you're absolutely, this is the hardest thing to do. So like you could have the best product or system in the world or, or change management program out there. And, you know, it, it's the hardest to get people to believe in themselves, one, believe in themselves or get them to change, you know, double edged sword there. So the best way that I know to overcome this two ways, one is to magic pill it. So, you know, again, this gets, this is borderline. This is like the burger on TV. You want to address the program and design it in a way that makes it as easy as possible for them to achieve results. So that's one. Number two is to tell enough case studies or testimonials and try to get as close to that audience member as possible. So if you're the CEO of a healthcare company in your fifties and you're overweight, if we tell a case study of a CEO, you know, that I just described fifties overweight in my test, in my presentation, that hits a little closer to home sure. because it's like, I can see myself like that's me. Like, yeah. you know, they don't always say that, but that's how you can get. Now you obviously, if you're, you've got a big audience, you, you know, you don't have time to tell 151, you know, different sort of case studies that hit everyone in the audience. And so, you know, telling powerful stories and testimonials, case studies that people can relate to and then magic pilling it, which means just making it so irresistible, making it, And again, a lot of people misinterpret this and they say, well, are we misleading them? No, we're telling stories of people that have achieved results quickly using whatever program or system or, you know, thing that you have to offer. Mm -hmm. And so those are the the ways that I know to overcome it. It's the hardest one, Dove. It's the hardest one. It is. Um, Mm -hmm. And because there are all kinds of things for sale. And as you talked about, you know, you could have the right software or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, as a leader, and it's the thing we talk about along the show here, is as a leader, you have to know that it's actually on you. The transformation of an organization is on you. The transformation of your culture, of your teams, is all on you. And if you are not stepping up into that, you know, we talk about the, the, you, 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 you as a leader have likely been trained to call them soft skills, but they are the most essential skills. And if you don't master those, you're dead in the water because you're never going to keep top people, particularly today with millennials who are not loyal to, they're they're not loyal to a company, but they will be loyal to an individual. And that's what's really important is to build that connection and that bond. So I'll say it. I'll say it here just because if if people have any sort of rapport with me or, or, or like me, you know, the reason why I'm not at 100 million yet is not the team. It's not the market. It's me. You know, and, and if you don't understand that, it's not to say that I'm broken. It's just there's a, what got me here is not going to get me to 100 million. There's new skills, like you said. There's new mindsets. There's new ways of being that I have to be. And so, um, it, you know, it's very easy to say, oh, it's the market or it's my team or I need this person, you know, or we don't have the funding. And at the end of the day, if you're a leader, you've got to take that responsibility. And so uh, if that inspired one person, um, then I did my job. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and there's so many areas I'd like to get into here, like, you know, 
is there a difference between standing on a platform or delivering on a webinar or, you know, uh, and there's, sure. there's, there's a lot of great things that we can get into here, but I want to yeah. just, I want to, I want to dig in a little bit onto, onto Dustin, if I may. Absolutely. Um, let's do it. You're, you know, you've done this, you've built this company. Yeah. You, but you started out and you mentioned in, as we were speaking today that you started out in software. Is that where you, did you go into the tech world out of school or? Yeah, so uh, not out of school, during school. So I was very much into building web pages at the time, coding, you know, before it was so easy now uh, that it is, uh, doing eBay, just tinkering and, um, you know, just having fun and, and doing that. And then um, I got involved with a real estate technology company. Essentially, we were, were providing foreclosure information online and, and selling that as a, as a service, you know, SaaS essentially. And so um, what happened was to grow that company, you know, we thought, oh, we'll just make the software better. So we kept dumping money into the company, making the software better. But what we found is we needed to get in front of people, our marketplace. And so um, we would go to real estate offices and mortgage brokers one to one. And we're like, man, this is killing us. And so we figured out we needed to do one to many. And so from that, I discovered that the power of speaking and direct response marketing and seminars and leading uh, people that way. Real estate market turned, and that's when I created Speaking Empire, essentially showing other companies how that they can grow quickly by leveraging what we learned at that real estate company. And so now, uh, Dove, as you mentioned, I recently exited as a first time uh, giving this in an interview. So you've got the exclusive, which is why you, you need to keep your ears and eyes on on Dove because he's he's a leader and he brings uh, fresh information and, and scoops like this. And so I exited. And the reason why is I've been doing it for nine years in this space. And, you know, it's a hard space. And the reason why is you're dealing with people. And um, I've had my fun. I've learned my lessons. And, um, you know, true to my heart is I want to get back in software. And so um, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for those opportunities. I'm here at PodFest just seeing what's available because I've had my head down for so long and just mm -hmm. blinders on. I did, and I'm amazed at what the heck is out in this world right now. It's blowing my mind. What is there something that's presently exciting to you? Um, I'm looking at chatbots right now, and that's you know when you go to somebody's website and you know they say, "Hey, how are you?" and you know it pops up. Nothing new. Chat's not new, especially on the internet, but. What people are doing now is they're making decision diamonds and trees and logic, if you want to call it that, to where it can feel custom, like you're talking to a human, and then at some point, then it gets turned over. You know, I think maybe in 10, 15, 20 years, we'll have artificial intelligence, which will be much further along. But I think right now, this is paving the road for, for that. So even when you talk to Alexa or Siri, um, right now, it's one way. You're not having a conversation per se. It's going to get there, and that's what excites me. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, the whole world of AI is, you know, it even as little as five, ten years ago, it was very futuristic. Yes. And now we people don't realize how much AI we all live with every single day. You know, most people think that when they think of AI, they don't even think about Siri. You know, yeah. but Siri's AI. Yeah. That's exactly what it is: artificial intelligence. And there's a lot of very exciting endeavors going on in that, you know, so it's, it's pretty cool stuff. And so I, I, I'm, I'm sure that you will find yourself on that leading edge and I want to wish you every possible success with that. Who, Thank you. who has been, who has been a leader to you? Who do you see as a leader who has had the most influence on you? Mm. Well, God, you say, he said, I'm going to, I'm going to just go off kilter. So my, my grandmother, I, you know, Dove to, to be vulnerable and transparent, you know, my grandmother recently died. It was last year. Um, she recently died and it, it finally was my wake up call to look at my life, you know, because uh, I had it easy. You know, I was the face of a company, uh, doing well, um, interacting with high level leaders. Um, and when that happened, um, you know, people have died in my life since running the company. Don't get me wrong. But when that happened, it just, it forced me to slow down. And there were signs, you know, when you look back, um, there's a, a very good video by Steve Jobs saying connecting the dots backward that, that really resonates with me. I think every leader should watch that video. Yeah. Um, you can Google it. And so um, I started connecting the, that, that was the impetus for me to start connecting the dots backwards in my life. And so um, my grandmother, you know, she, I'm more happy go lucky 
uh, sort of individual. I'm very positive. We can do anything. My grandmother was different. She was more pragmatic. She was more direct. And, um, you know, I appreciate that about her. And that sort of just made me question a lot of things, just differences in style. And so I would like to share that because that's what really has set me on a new path that I'm excited about. And I know this happens a lot to people is it does take an incident in your life to figure out a new direction, a new path. Sometimes it's death. Sometimes it's, you know, some other thing. And so, you know, she is the most impactful. There's tons of leaders that have had great impact for me. And in this moment, I really feel to give homage to her. That's beautiful. I think that oftentimes, as you said, it is a major event, but my caution to people, even as, as you're tuned in right now, and I say this, yeah. I've said this many times, my caution is that in the moment of the big event, it's, uh, you know, and you spoke about it earlier, it's like a motivational presentation. Yeah. You can feel inspired in the moment of a big event, your grandma died or your parent died or, or your beloved died or you got yeah. a horrible diagnosis or you went bankrupt or whatever it might be. And in that moment, it's easy to feel like, okay, everything's going to change. But the problem is if you don't take action, which is what you're talking about at the, at the end of a presentation, if yeah. you don't take the action, there's a pretty good chance it'll be Monday. And what I mean is that Monday will come and you'll just do what you've always done and it yeah. will become less and less and less important until you have another event. And, I, you know, and I've spoken a lot about this because I fell off a mountain, got smashed to pieces, and that was my fourth fall. It wasn't my first. People think it was the only fall. It was the fourth. And every time the three previous ones was like, oh, my goodness, everything has to change. And I was certain it would. And then Monday came. But it was only when the fourth one, which was so major, yeah. that I was completely debilitated and smashed to pieces and the you know, reconstructive surgeries that I didn't have I had a lot of time to sit around and not allow it to be Monday. But yeah. spent nine months saying it's gonna be Monday and then realizing it isn't. So I think that you know what you shared there is an important piece that ties very strongly into about about the presentation piece, which is you've gotta get an action right away. Mm -hmm. because it's going to be Monday, right? Um, and as the Boontown Rant says, tell me why I don't like Mondays. It's that it, Monday will pull you back into the loop of what you've always done, and, we, and that is a cost that is way too high. I agree. I agree. I mean, it took me a couple Mondays uh, for yeah. me to make my decision because it was hard. You know, like it wasn't hard. It was just that was my mind, my ego chatting. And, um, you know, I think I've had signs and I think a lot of people in life have signs and we don't listen to them. And so if there's anything I can share there, it's to, you know, just be more in tune. Like somehow we have an internal guidance system. You can call it your inner voice. You can call it Buddha. You can call it Jesus, whatever, mm -hmm. um, you know, the universe. Um, I think we get, we're given signs or, or like we know ultimately, which is our path that we're supposed to be on. Um, it's just for me, you know, I'm a, a driven, I'm a guy. Number one, number two is a, I'm an entrepreneur and I got to do it my way and I got to build it and ego and all that. And so if there's anything I can communicate to folks is, you know, just be more in tune or at least listen, you know, maybe you're not supposed to be doing what, what you're doing, or maybe you can pivot and have a lot more success or have the life of your dreams. And it's not easy. Um, these things, um, but uh, it's definitely worth listening to. Yeah. If there's one, based on everything we've been talking about today, if there's one yeah. practical piece of guidance, uh, direction, something you would like uh, our leaders to say, okay, I'm going to go do this, you know, like, guess where we are? Uh, yeah. <laughs> based on your five step formula, guess where we are? So what's the what's the one practical action you want them to take in the next 24 hours or, or at maximum five working days? All right, I'm going to give them two and usually don't do don't do two, but number number one is to get Dove on your team in whatever way. So whether it's to go see him speak at an event or listen into his next podcast or hire him as a coach, having the coach accountability piece is for sure number one, the thing that has helped me immensely. And I know I've heard it a lot of times, I've said it a lot of times, but having a sounding board is mission critical and outside view um, that challenges you and questions you. Well, that number was very two, kind. thank you, sir. Absolutely, ab absolutely. Number two is go get the book. Real flat and simple. So if you like presentations, if you're leading, if you're doing Facebook Lives or not doing them yet, as a CEO, it's coming. Facebook Live, Snapchat. I'm here at podcasts and people are in the hallway shooting videos. They're doing podcasts. You know, as leaders, it's coming. Whether you're hiding from it or not, it's here. So you need to know how to communicate. So if you resonate with that, then I want you to go to nobspresentations.com. I got a new book out on how to 
craft your message, how to be more influential and how to get people into action. And you can check that out at nobspresentations.com. It's in the bookstores. It's at Amazon. But go there because the book is one thing and it's valuable. And I know you. It's Monday's going to happen. And unless I give you tools and resources to implement and execute faster, it's not likely to get done. And so at No BS Presentation, you'll find bonuses. You'll find things that will help you implement and execute quicker. Fantastic. NoBSPresentations.com. That's right. Excellent. Get yourselves there, folks. Listen, let's let's uh, all put our hands together and thank Dustin. I really appreciate having you thank here. Thank you. Um, it was great material, lots of great stuff, and I love the five-step formula, and I, and I love the way you explained it and why it is vital for leaders to learn how to present in a way that works. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure and honor having you with us. And I want to thank you, dear listener, dear viewer, for tuning in. And again, I say to you every time, please don't listen to this in the background. Like, take some notes, pay attention, and then take action. Take action on it. If you don't take action on it, I've got some news for you. Nothing will change. Nothing will change at all. So put it in action. And remember, the, the research consistently shows that one of the biggest challenges facing even the most successful companies is somewhat counterintuitive in that these fast-growing companies often hit a point where they're spending a fortune attracting, training, and developing their talent only to have them leave them at an alarming rate. If you are sick of investing in training and developing your talent, only have them leave you before you get your ROI, then come talk to us at fullmontyleadership.com. Full Monty Leadership, we provide you the essential leadership skills to rekindle and amplify your hidden loyalty assets by tapping into your purpose. Fullmontyleadership.com, providing you with the concrete soft skills to get you to your new organization to the top and keep you there. Why? Because you can't outsource authenticity. And also remember to get yourself over to matrix.fullmontyleadership.com matrix like the movie dot full monthly leadership dot com and get your authentic leadership matrix self-assessment tool it's valued at 197 it's absolutely free to you for being a listener so thank you again i'm your host dog baron founder of full monthly leadership and i'm here to assist you tapping in you and your company tapping into your deep greatness so that you can reach that next level of clarity focus purpose profit in your business your life and your leadership till next time this is Dov Brown saying, stay curious, my friend. Stay curious about how you need to understand the power of your presentation that you are always selling. Now the question is, are you? So next time, this is Dov Brown, Full Multi Leadership. I am out. Mm-hmm.